15 months ago, I moved into this house. When I moved into this house, the front lawn that you see behind me, I thought was a mixture of weeds and kikuyu grass. What I didn't really understand is how much crabgrass was in it and how much Bermuda grass was in it. Over the course of the year, let's see, the growing season 2023, I tended to this lawn as if it was kikuyu grass until I realized just how much Bermuda was in it. So then I started trying to kill the kikuyu grass while promoting the Bermuda grass. Currently what you see, this is February 29th, leap year 2024. The vast majority of the green that you see behind me is winter ryegrass, seeded and grown over the top of dormant Bermuda grass. Over the course of the month of March, the Bermuda grass is really gonna start coming out of winter dormancy. Some of it already is. And I'm gonna be transitioning from the winter rye back to Bermuda grass. But here's the kicker. I've done no major lawn renovation to this. I've done work on the front lawn, but I haven't put seed down other than the annual rye. The weeds have simply been suppressed and the Bermuda grass has been pushed to give us a good looking lawn, something basically what you see right now. If we look close at the lawn, we still see there are some dark spots. The dark spots in this lawn is lingering fescue. That right there is fescue. This right there is fescue. Fescue is what you're gonna see in lawns all over Southern California. They're all green throughout the, throughout the winter months. Some of the work that I've done on weeds also suppresses fescue grass. Some of the work that I've done on limiting the kakuya grass in this front yard also damages fescue grass, but I haven't gotten rid of it all the way. I've also got some spots on the lawn with nothing growing in it. These were weeds that I have hand pulled. Weeds grew up, covered the area, grass died underneath it. Now I have to wait for the dormant Bermuda grass to warm up, wake up, and start covering the area again. More spots, that's weeds. Hand weeded sections. Hand weeded, hand weeded. This area right here is a spot where I was testing an herbicide to see what it would do to annual ryegrass. I wanted to see if a particular product would kill off annual bluegrass, otherwise known as, known as poa annua. Look at this right here. I can just pull that right out of the ground. This is poa annua. There it is. Shallow little root system com comes right up. But I wanted to see if I could spray something on the lawn to get rid of the poa annua, but not damage the annual ryegrass. Obviously, the annual ryegrass died, and the poa annua did not. However, I have also learned that by killing off the annual ryegrass, the dormant Bermuda grass in this one little spot is already greening up and growing. Even though we don't really see Bermuda grass growing in the lawn yet, I do see it right here, which leads me to believe that if I were to kill off all of the annual rye this time of year, the Bermuda would wake up and start growing and being a darker green much earlier than if I just wait. Over the course of 2023, like the growing season 2023, I have learned a lot about this front lawn. I had a ton of nutsedge growing in it. I learned just how difficult it is to deal with the nutsedge infestation. I've applied halosulfuron to this a couple times, trying to get rid of the nutsedge, and I think I'm almost there. A little bit later in the spring, I do expect to see more nutsedge pop back up because nutsedge is not a grass. It's almost like a bulb plant. There's a little nut underground, kind of about the size of a cashew. The shoots grow out of it, up out into the surface. It kind of looks like grass. But if you spray something on that grass, that nutsedge, it pulls it down into that nut, but it's not enough to kill the actual nut off. It takes multiple applications of the exact right herbicide. Interesting, interestingly enough, when I prepared this artichoke bed for my wife, I sifted all of the soil and I pulled all of the nutlets out of ground by hand. And I've had almost zero nutlet infestation in this area since I did that. Manual cultivation, manual removal is easily the best method for like, I don't know, fixing the problem for good, but it takes way too much time 
to do for a thousand square foot space. I anticipate having more nuts edge problems in 2024. And I'll make some videos about them as, uh, as the problems arise. I also found that I had a lot of crabgrass in this lawn. I didn't think I had crabgrass in this lawn because it was so thick that I literally mixed it up with the Bermuda grass that was in this lawn. It took me a while, but I really eventually identified the fact that the Bermuda grass had a much finer leaf blade than the crabgrass did. Now eventually crabgrass gets bad enough that seed heads start forming and the stolons look completely different. And the stems of crabgrass look completely different than the lateral stolons of Bermuda grass. Eventually it becomes obvious. But I had to deal with some manual excavation of crabgrass and some chemical intervention. Not only did I have to deal with weeds, including uh, on top of those broadleaf weeds and kakuya grass, which Quinclorac also attacks. Quinclorac attacks the crabgrass, but it also attacks the kakuya grass. So I've been able to transition this lawn mostly into a Bermuda grass lawn. But on top of all of that, I've had to do a couple leveling jobs. So right here in the middle of the lawn, it kind of had a divot, uh, a very wide, low divot when I moved into the property. Um, I actually harvested dirt from my parkway strip and brought it here, leveled it all out. And I had a very large divot right here under this tall patch of grass, which I've been allowing to get overgrown for the purpose of another experiment. Video on that will be out in early 2024. But I added some dirt right there, again, that I harvested from the parkway strip. No dirt or sand was brought in to level this lawn, but it is significantly flatter than it was 15 months ago when we moved in. Additionally, it just never stops, does it? Additionally, I installed Irrigreen irrigation system into this yard. So this one sprinkler head, believe it or not, is able to water the entire lawn with one head with no overspray. Insanity. It's amazing what technology is making possible. So I had to trench that in. That's basically a little computer underground. If you were to dig it up, there's a little computer inside the sprinkler head with a pipe that comes over here and attaches to our irrigation box, which then comes over to our irrigation um, inlet. Let's call it inlet. Manually, I trenched all of this in, installed it. In fact, I trenched this way, and then I tunneled underneath the driveway to put the sprinkler in, another era green sprinkler in, right there. So that sprinkler head goes there, and then it comes around, and then it goes all the way. It covers this entire weirdly shaped rectangle without any overspray. Truly amazing. Uh, the pipe then elbows this way and we trenched in underground and then eventually we covered it up with cement but the trench goes on to the backyard and we do the exact same thing in the backyard. Irrigreen is pretty darn special if you have a lawn with no bare dirt showing. Now in addition to just the general maintenance of this lawn because I, I have to mow this lawn roughly once every two days or so at this height uh, I've also cut back the bush over here, uh, did some trenching. I still have to dig this out. We're going to be putting some flowers and ornamentals in here. Uh, I got to keep a wife happy after all. So I want her front yard to look nice. We've put in stuff here. We removed a couple of these monster lavender plants uh, to put in this spider plant. I'm not sure if that's a technical term for it, but this little spider plant, uh, which is common and decorative. And I've been slowly pruning back these lavender plants, trying to get them into a more manageable size. See this? They're just overgrown to the point where we've got a lot of bare wood showing. So incrementally, those are getting smaller and tidier. We removed a handful of bushes over there, which, is gonna, which has been giving us more light in the late day. The late day, the sun is up here and it comes in. So we're getting more sun on this area of the lawn. And I've been, I've been keeping up with pruning back these tropical hibiscuses. They're probably due for a pruning right now. They're getting pretty close. 
But one of the challenges with Kikuyu grass and Bermuda grass is its lateral spread where you don't want it. So as we see down here, we've got a lot of, this is predominantly Kikuyu grass that has spread over here. So you can just kind of grab it at the bottom and pull it up. It comes up pretty easy. So it's kind of got shallow roots. The problem is each one of these little plants will start rhizoming out side to side. So each one of these can be connected. So even though I pull this up, there's probably a rhizome under there somewhere that's growing into another one and will send up a new plant. That's why one of the reasons, that's one of the main reasons why Kakui grass is considered to be an invasive species, a bad grass. So this spring, and really already for the past like 28 days or so, I've really been taking a lot of time going under these bushes and hand weeding, because I don't like using herbicides if I don't have to, but hand weeding a lot of this. So you'll see that I don't have any kikuyu grass. There's a couple, well, <laughs> I can't say there's none. There's one right there that's come up. But the vast majority of the kikuyu grass has been eradicated from under here and under here. And I have to keep going this way. At some point here this spring, I'm gonna have this entire area cleared out. And the plan here is to eventually put in a retaining wall and uh, landscape this whole area. But in the interim, I wanna plant a completely different kind of grass right here. A grass that you're not gonna see grown on any other YouTube channel about grass. I promise you, I guess I can't 100% promise you, but I promise you that the only grass YouTube channel talking about corn is right here on Turf Mechanic. I want to put a block of corn in here, mostly because we garden and we eat corn, but corn is in the grass family and it is a fantastic way to illustrate actual grass, like our turf grass, because it's so big. Because corn is exactly like regular, regular grass, I can look at a corn stalk and a corn leaf and a corn cob and show you what things look like because it's exactly the same with most, with many grass types. It's a great illustrative tool, at least I think it will be. And that's probably gonna go here within the next month or two. If you do have a backyard garden, maybe I can help you with your corn block. Of course, I've got videos on the channel where I've talked about in-ground sprinklers. These are the standard in-ground sprinklers. I've been, I've switched everything out to Toro sprinklers on this property, um, which I've explained why in other videos. For those of you watching this deep, really having standard sprinklers in, in my lawn uh, is a way of being relatable. Let's put it like that. So most people have standard in-ground sprinklers and most people understand what standard in-ground sprinklers are. But if they see my fancy ear grain, ear grain sprinkler over there, then they don't get it. They don't understand it. It's, it doesn't seem as relatable. So I maintain both. Both work independent of the other. If you are gonna use regular standard sprinklers, this is a good example. See this one right here, I've been ignoring it but this is an old sprinkler. It's pointed the wrong way, it needs to be replaced. So this is one that I should have replaced already, but you know, I'm human, I just haven't done it yet. In fact, not only replacing sprinklers around the property, I have started installing sprinklers on the property from scratch. So this parkway strip, which is very thin buffalo grass seeded in the fall, not only was it seeded in the fall, but I installed a brand spanking new irrigation system out here in the fall as well. Before I get talking more about this parkway strip and the buffalo grass and the sprinkler system in it and the plans for the future, I'm gonna put that in another video, which you can find linked up here in the corner or down in the description below.